Okay, questions for Coach? First question right in the middle. Uh, whichever one you want to go. Uh, Poem from the Sports Channel. Hello, Coach. I bet you have seen the, the video clips of Steve Kerr's Kung Fu like clipboard smashing. And uh, what's your re reaction to that when you see I, or he heard I'm that? I'm sorry, I can't, I, I can't understand. I'm sorry. Uh, I bet you have seen the video clip of Steve Kerr's Kung Fu like uh, clipboard smashing in, in, in the game. Oh, when he knocked the clipboard out. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, yes. <laughs> uh, what's your reaction to that when you see or heard that? Oh, just, you know, something went wrong that he was unhappy about. But that's, you know, that's what coaching is all about, you know, being intense and being engaged and being into the game. And it must have been something he didn't like for him to break a clipboard like that. Pretty strong guy. Ty, how have you guys used the couple of days off here uh, in between games? And do you feel like it's been productive? Been very productive. Just watching film, just going over the things we need to get better at. You know, we did some good things last game, but some things we need to clean up to get better at and try to take away their easy baskets. We, they're going to score points. They're a great team, but we can't gift them baskets. Dave? Ty, Dave McVenom and ESPN. Kyrie had an aggressive game one, and, uh, but at some point, did you feel like he got into a bit of a one-on-one -on -one game with Steph Curry and – how do you balance the wanting him to be aggressive but also wanting him to, to stay part of the team? Well, we talked about it yesterday. And, you know, we want Kyrie to be aggressive, but it has to be sharp, quick attacks. You know, you can't dribble for eight or nine seconds, and we had that discussion. And he understands that. But we need him to score the basketball. We need him to be aggressive. And if there's one guy that can go one-on-one -on, -one on the perimeter, it is Kyrie because he's very special. Um, outside of taking advantage of mismatches in the post with Kevin and with LeBron, you know, Kyrie is the one guy that we have can break guys, off, break guys down off the dribble. So it's, gotta be, it's gonna be a fine line, but he has to be um, quicker on the attack rather than letting them load up and then trying to go um, four, five, six seconds, and then they loading up their defense and then he's trying to attack. So it has to be a little faster. Last row in the center. Dave Schilling uh, from The Guardian. Um, what are you working on this week, the next today uh, to limit turnovers because it's been such a, an issue for you in game one. Uh, is it the Warriors that are, are causing too many turnovers or are you seeing it being more uh, mental lapses for your team? I mean, turnovers is part of the game. Um, you know, I like aggressive turnovers when we're trying to go to the basket. And they had about five or six strip downs that they got, swipe downs when we went to the basket. So those are aggressive turnovers when you're trying to get to the basket. We just can't have the cross court, you know, silly passes or you know, shot clock violations, things like that. But throughout the course of the game, you know, they're, they're a good defensive team. They're active. They're long. They're going to get their hands on balls. So, you know, I just like the aggressive turnovers rather than the passive ones. Emilio in third row. Emilio Perez, Stop Deportes. Coach, uh, how much of a challenge it's to maintain your team focus on your game plan and try to not make the mistakes you make in game one? Do you, do you need to be more vocal? Or guys like Kyrie, Kevin, and LeBron need to be more vocal on the floor? I just think, you know, you prepare for a good team like this that has great movement. And until you actually get on the floor and play against them to kind of get a feel for it, you know, it's different. And I think the guys, you know, after playing game one, has a feel for how they play and the speed of the game and the force which they cut and move the basketball. So um, after game one, I think we'll be very uh, well prepared for game two. Chris, over here on this side. Chris Haynes, Cleveland.com. Coach, I apologize for stepping outside the series real quick, but uh, with Muhammad Ali passing yesterday, uh, is there a quote or a message of his uh, throughout his lifetime that, that, that resonated with you, that stood out with you, that you know you, you hold with you? You know, Muhammad Ali in my household meant a lot, and, you know, especially to my grandfather. And that's, that was you know, the first guy that I idolized growing up was Muhammad Ali. Um, it's a quote that my grandfather taught me a long time ago. Um, it's been a long time ago, so it's, um, bear with me. Um, impossible is a, is a big word thrown around by small men who live, um, who live in the world they've been given um, rather than, let me see, rather than um, explore the power they have to change it. And then he says, um, impossible is not a fact, it's an opinion. Um, impossible is not a declaration, it's a dare. Impossible 
is man, it's been so long ago, but um, it was a quote that's always stuck with me, you know, from my life. And um, my grandpa, he he embedded that in me. You know, Muhammad Ali was everything to him, and I grew up watching Muhammad Ali my whole life. So um, I'm sorry about the quote, but it went, it went like that. But I was a small, you know, I was a young kid, and um, that's kind of how I, you know lived my life because you know I've been underrated my whole life and. I've been, you know, saying I couldn't achieve this, couldn't do that. And Muhammad Ali was a was a big reason why I was able to achieve so much in my life. And just knowing what he've done, he's done for this country of fighting for human rights, you know, not just black rights, but human rights and making every kid feel they had a chance to to be something special. And um, he really meant a lot to me. And I've, I've, I was honored and had the privilege to, to meet him a few times. And I mean, it just meant the world to me. So, yeah, it, I mean, I'll get the quote right. <laughs> I'll get it better for you. I'm pretty sure Jason can look it up for me um, if I miss anything. But <laughs> but it, it went something like that. And it just always meant a lot to me. Last two. Peter on your right and over here. Uh, Peter Mitchell from Australian AP. I was just wondering, have you talked to Delhi in the past couple of days just about his aggressive play? Are you happy with how he plays? Should he reel it back in a little bit? Or can you just talk about that? Well, when Delhi plays, they, they put a big guy on him. They put Eagle Dollar on him. They put Livingston on him to try to speed him up. And just told Delhi, just, just, you know, just slow down. Just, you know, run the offense. And I know what bigger guys trying to defend you, it is tough. Because I was a small guard and they put bigger guys on me. It, it was tough. But um, Delhi's been great. We know he's going to get, you know, you're going to get fight from Delhi. He's going to, um, defensively, he's going to be great. And, um, you know, with, with his minutes being, you know, 10, 11, 12 minutes, it's really not, you know, a lot of time to get into a great flow. But, you know, Delhi's been great. He's been tagged as being dirty and overly aggressive. Oh, really? Yeah, but Delhi. Yeah, I don't believe it. I mean, some other guys have been, you know, <laughs> been doing way worse things than Delhi has. So, I mean, I don't. I just see a guy who plays hard, who's tough, um, hard nose, and that's the way the game should be played. Would you say Draymond is? No, more I wouldn't say anything. Or? But I wouldn't say Delhi was dirty. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Last one over here on this side. Dan Wake, you Orange County Register. Ty, um, you mentioned the other day that you, you'd spoken to Doc before the series. S since you got the job, and, and how often have you leaned on him? What have those conversations been like? And is there something that he said to you that that's really helped you kind of get through this year? Well, I talk to Doc a lot, <laughs> probably too much, you know. But he's just always been there for me, you know, just going through tough times this season and you know, going throughout the playoffs and, you know, after after game one, we've talked, you know, a few times and just being positive and just, you know, some things that he's seen that we can do a little different. And, you know, I always lean on him to to talk basketball, to help me with certain situations. And he's been there for me, but I can't give away my secrets. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. Yeah.